Hey everybody and welcome to Chairman of the Board. Today I'm looking at the Voyages of Marco Polo, which is a two to four player dice worker placement game by Simone Luciani and Daniele Toschini or Tassini. And uh, I have to say they've done it again for me. This is an absolutely amazing game. These designers just seem to be making games that are just perfect for my tastes. This is another one that is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, they've made Sulkin, which is actually in my top three games of all time, uh, Council of Four, which is another great game, and amongst many others, which are all absolutely fantastic. But this one is right up there as well. It's known as one of their kind of crown jewel games, and I can so see why. Um, you know, the mechanisms in the game are so nicely put in place, and like the, uh, the way that you use the dice, not only, you know, do you get the kind of great kind of... Um, you know, the, the puzzle of trying to work out how to use them, but you've got a really great um, mitigation there as well because you can use some of your resources, <clears throat> the camels, to really mess around with your dice, to change your pips as you need fit, to re-roll them, uh, to get more dice and stuff. So you've got a load of mitigation there and the luck really isn't that big of a factor. Now, um, the game itself is uh, a very kind of, a very clean design. You're basically gonna be collecting resources, cashing them in for points, um, in the means of contracts, very much like uh, the Lords of Waterdeep. So you're basically collecting resources, cashing them in for points and other different bonuses such as more resources or camels or new contracts and stuff like that. But you've also got the uh, the map on the top, hand of the top half of the board where you're going to be trying to travel around uh, dropping off your different like uh, trade houses in these different locations, uh, getting a bit of an engine building as you get into those smaller cities. Uh, basically, those smaller cities are going to give you um, permanent bonuses at the beginning of every round but the bigger cities are going to give you um, like new worker placement spots you can use and some of those are really cool you can get some nice um, points in return by trading in your goods and stuff like that but you've also got to try race to uh, one particular place on the board in Beijing uh, the first player to get there will get 10 points the second seven points then four points and or so on so there's that race to get there but also you want to try to get your little engine going and also you have your own little secret objectives where you're trying to set up um, up to four trade houses in these different locations and you're going to get points uh, depending on how many of those you get down. So there's loads to think about here and it just works so well together. I love the way the, um, you know, you have to kind of really carefully manage your uh, resources and funds and stuff to carefully move around that board and plan your routes because it's quite expensive to do so and uh, you, you know you do have to be on the ball there and the slightest miscalculation can actually um, you know screw up your time completely you've got to really think about which uh, spots you want to prioritize to get to because um, if you don't get there first uh, you go there second you can you can still go to that place but you have to pay a fee equal to the number of um, your lowest dice you've allocated to that space and you know some of those spaces only need one die or some need two some need three but I just love the management of the die and how you use them but you know that's the game in its own right in its kind of uh, in its pure form but what really adds that flavor into it is those unique player powers all the character roles are so, so powerful uh, and in a way that you really don't think are balanced in any way. Um, you know, they're going to really kind of dictate the kind of strategy you're going to take in the game um, because they are so varied and different. And, you know, it's one of those games where you think your power isn't as good as your opponent's and they think the same to you. Um, but, you know, they do seem really good. Uh, the only thing that I do kind of think that might be a little bit overpowered is the character who can actually choose all the results of his die. Uh, I've read on forums on that that he is perfectly balanced but something in me just kind of doubts that but you know more plays will kind of uh, give the answer to that question. But yeah overall this game is absolutely wonderful. The, uh, the decisions are there, just so many uh, careful planning but without being too much you've got the mitigation of the dice so you can actually um, you know you're not so much of a victim of the luck the the balance of the game is very clever considering how uh, how you know asymmetric the powers are um, and you know sometimes you just think how can I compete with that power and you know you're doing the same and by the end of the game they will kind of balance out um, yeah mechanics wise or the mechanism of the game I love dice placement and this game has like a perfect uh, 
it kind of has loads of different things that I love in a very, you know, loads of different games, such as like Lords of Waterdeep, um, Kingsburg, uh, the Castles of Burgundy. For me, this game has like all the best bits of those games, but kind of mashed into one very tight, very concise game. And I absolutely love that. I mean, the game doesn't take long at all to play. It only plays over five rounds and, um, you know, they do absolutely fly by. Uh, you know, it says the box is about 20 minutes per player, and I, I completely agree with that. It's, it's a very, very concise game, but it has very, very meaty feel to it. Uh, the uptime is really good because you're going to be uh, going, you know, taking one turn at a time, you know, placing your die, next person places theirs. So you're not kind of waiting for them to take their whole turn, you're going back and forth, um, so it ticks along very nicely. Um, replayability wise there is absolutely a shed loads of different cards that you can play onto the board giving you a different setup each time um, you've got the different player powers you've got the different you can you, know, you can put them all in different orders and stuff like that so you've got loads of variability there and it plays very differently at the different player counts too so replayability wise is very good uh, player interaction um, so mainly it's going to be beating people to those spots so that they have to pay a fee to use them um, but also the race, the different locations, um, particularly to Beijing, where um, you know you want to be first to get there to get that big injection of points for end game scoring. Um, aesthetically, I really like the look of the game. It has a very kind of Euro look to it, but it's done very, very nicely. Um, I like the the kind of the feel of the game, the, the sandy kind of look of the board, and just the kind of uh, the general kind of you know the filter on it. it looks very, very cool. Um, component quality is very good too. You got nice, really nice quality wooden dice there. Um, all the cards are nice. The um, the the tiles are really nice. Uh, everything is very very well done. All the wooden pieces are really good. Uh, the only slight different, uh, the slight little uh, niggle I have on the game is that the some of the resources, um, you know, the ones that represent like one camel and one that represents three camels. The, diff the size difference between them is very, very small, so it can be kind of difficult to differentiate them, uh, you know, at a quick glance, but really nitpicking there, no, no big deal. Um, theme of the game, really cool. I mean, it's a Euro, so it's not all about theme, but, you know, the Marco Polo theme, trying to get to Beijing, um, you know, it works really well. And, uh, yeah, it's just a wonderful game. Um, nice and easy to set up too, and I just I just absolutely love it. It's a very very uh, it's pretty accessible to be honest. Yeah, I thought this this would actually be a lot heavier than what it was, but the mechanisms in the game are very simple, um, and it's not fiddly at all. Once you get your head around those bonus actions and how you can mitigate your dice and stuff, but yeah, it's definitely not too heavy, and I think maybe it might be ranked a little bit too heavy on uh, on Board Game Geek, but uh, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, but yeah, overall, it has such a nice flowing feel to it. It's just really enjoyable. Um, the player powers are so interesting and just add so much kind of fun to the game and just interesting to see the different routes people take. Uh, it's just my cup of tea. This, honestly, these designers almost make games perfectly catered to my tastes and uh, I just can't wait to try more and more of their games because they are absolutely knocking it out of the park. So, uh, if, unless you can't tell, I absolutely, completely recommend um, trying out the Voyages of Marco Polo, uh, especially if you like Euro games and worker placement games and games with dice. And if you are a little bit, um, you know, unsure on games with dice because you think they're so luck dependent, try this one out because the, the uh, dice mitigation is very, very good. Um, so yeah, that's my review on the Voyages of Marco Polo, an excellent, excellent game that deserves all the credit it receives. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, review of The Voyages of Marco Polo. If you have, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.